All right, good evening, everyone. Um, we are going to be in Romans chapter 13, starting at verse 8. Uh, we might do a quick review on uh, 1 through 7, but uh, the focus is going to be 8 and following. And let's make sure we are online here so our Facebook family can join. All right. Let's see. All right. All right. So, um, hello, Miss Lampkins. Hello there, sir. How are you? Oh, well, you know, it's Bible study night, so you know how I am. Yeah. Oh, what are you? All right. All right. Hey, Miss Daphne. Hey, Pastor. Did you get your book? No. Is it outside? It's outside. Okay, then I'll get it in a few minutes. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody, let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you uh, for another opportunity to gather together uh, from across the country uh, because you have provided a way. And Lord God, we are using that way to learn about your way. Lord, we want to be better. We have come not for former fashion. We did not come to see or be seen. We come to be fed. We've come to be changed. We've come to be transformed. And so now, God, I pray that you will block out everything that is not of you right now. So our entire focus, the focus of our entire being might be on you and your word. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. We need to hear from you. And we thank you in advance for the experience that we're about to have in your word with one another. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. So um, last week, uh, Romans 13, 1 through 7. Um, that's what we read last week. Anybody got anything they remember from last week that jumped out at them? Just as a point of review. Be a good citizen. Be a good citizen. That, that, yeah. That, that that that's good. Be a good citizen. As a Christian, to love everybody. We 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 ain't got there yet, but a responsible. What you that's what you said. Well, did I say that? I wrote it down. Oh, if, it, it, if Jackie wrote it down, I must have said that. As a matter of fact, I did. You know what? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, yes. Hey, anybody remember the acronym for love that I gave? Letting ourselves value everyone. Hey, I, then I must have said it then because she got it written down. All right. <laughs> yes. And we're going to talk a whole lot more about that today. So that's why, that's why you yeah. it, it threw me off, Jackie, because we're definitely talking about that today. Uh, Twyla, yeah. you unmuted yourself. Were you going to say something? No, that's okay. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Anything else from last week? Are you... Could you say something? Uh, well, yeah, because pay it uh, tribute also uh, God's ministers attending uh, controversial until a new thing, a better thing. So give pay uh, attention, pay 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 uh, pay the past. Oh, well, I like that when you said pay the pastor. <laughs> I don't think I said that, but I like it. <laughs> you said pay your taxes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but and, and we ended last week with, hey, pay, in verse seven, pay your obligations to everyone. Taxes yeah. to those you owe taxes, tolls or you owe tolls. And then we got to the real part, respect to those, does it say respect to those who have earned respect? No. Yeah. No, it's we, are, we owe respect to everyone. That's right. We owe respect. And how do how how do how do, how do we define respect? Deep admiration. Oh, I like that. I like that. Jackie is on it this this evening. Yeah, I took and, no good notes. You don't want to write that stuff down. We're gonna start just copying Jackie's notes and emailing them out to everybody. And, yeah. And then, then actually, then people will stop coming to Bible study because we're just going to go by Jackie's notes. 
<laughs> and oh. then also uh, honor to who you owe honor to. And, and honor mm -hmm. is that giving weight to. You know, I, yeah. I, I give weight to what you say. I, I am giving honor. And a lot of times we honor people not because of who they are, but the position they hold. All right. And, and one thing that I will definitely say about America in 2023, we have lost the idea of honoring people because of their position. I, I yeah. remember a time where, you know, um, if you were on a bus or something that a younger person would move to give a old person for a, for, a, for, a, for a more senior person yes because you know why because that's honor I, I, i'm honoring those who you know and and, and we we've we, we kind of got away from that and I, actually you know what i'm not so upset that the world has gotten away with that gotten away from that i'm more upset that the mm. church has gotten away from that wow because the world is going to do what the world's going to do right yes. Set no sin but we as the church have a responsibility somewhere, I think we're supposed to be living by, by this, by faith, by faith in this, all right? And, and so we want to challenge ourselves to be obedient followers of the word of God, okay? All right, anybody else, anything else from last week? I'm on here, I can see y'all. Can y'all see me? Yeah, we can hey, see Rosa. you. We can see you, Rosa. I didn't, I didn't know for sure it keeps going in and out. Uh, well, yeah, we, it's probably your internet, but we can definitely see you. Okay. Good afternoon, church. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. All right. Nothing else from last week? Because I hope, I hope some of y'all got some boots on because some toe is about to get stepped on. So if you want to hang up now, pretend like you got internet issues. <laughs> <laughs> now would be the time for the poor people that are here with me that rode with me y'all stuck <laughs> but everybody else if your internet happens to go out we'll, oh her internet went out that we'll we'll say that all right okay miss well, Mine just, mine yes, just came back on because you were out uh, oh yeah good way to start it so she's ready for the excuse when i start stepping on toes good job miss <laughs> pat um, uh, Miss Daphne, will you read Romans 13, read 8 through 10? 8 through 10? 8 through 10. Okay. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there are any other commandments, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Jerry, I think I go faster. All right. So, okay. All right. Bible scholars, what, what, what are we reading here in these verses? Okay. To love. All right. that's, that's a simple way. Uh, so it, what kind of love are we talking about? Unconditional. Okay, I got I got unconditional. I, that, that's a good word. That's a good word. Agape. Agape. Oh, say again, Dion. Agape. 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 Oh, there you go. Break out the Greek. See, ah, I knew the Bible mm -hmm. scholars was out tonight. We broke out the Greek in agape. Agape. Mm -hmm. it, uh, anybody know any other Greek words for love? Eros. 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 Anybody know? So what, what is Eros love? Sexual. Sexual love. That's when the brother was trying to kiss his wife too soon at the wedding. <laughs> 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 All right. Any Anybody else? Any other Greek words for love? Philos or phylos. Phylos. And what is that, Dion? Brainly. Is it brainly? Is it brotherly love? Brotherly love, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Brotherly yeah. love. All right, it, 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 it's like, hey, yeah, you know, I just, I just love you. Anybody else? Did anybody know any other Greek words for love? There's one we don't talk about very often. It's storge. S, I think it's S T O R G E. Storge. Storge is family love. Mm. I love you because my mama tells me I have to because we related. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. 
Yeah, yeah. We don't talk about that one much. Usually we talk about we talk about uh, Philos. We talk about Eros. That sexual love, that brotherly love. I, I I love you because I'm a friend. But that agape love is completely different, right? Because so it, when it says when it says uh, love, when we talk about this kind of love, is it a feeling or an action? Action. I got two actions here. I got an action from Rosa. Anybody else? Are y'all too scared action. to say it? action? Action. Yeah. Okay, I got action. So that so that means love is a verb. Yeah. A verb, a verb is something that you do, not just something that you feel. And so here, here, here's where the first toe stepping gets in. I ain't asked this one. So not I ain't. Oh my gosh, I apologize, Jackie. Um, yeah. Nowhere in this book will you read. I want you to like them. Right. I don't nowhere in this book that it said, I want you to feel good about them. That is not a condition for Christian love. That is a condition for Eros. That is a condition for Philos. Not necessarily a condition for Storge, but some of us know we didn't like some of the people we was we related to. And because we don't like them, we don't show love for them. But when you read the Bible, when you talk agape, agape does not give you a choice. We are told, better than not just told, we are commanded. What's a command? Directment. A direct statement? Directment to, to do something. A directment to do something. Direction to do something. Anybody else a command? Unconditional uh, direct. Oh, unconditional direction. All right. Mm. Uh, Requirement. Rosa, ahead, say, what, say what you said again. Something that you follow. <laughs> well, let me say it this way. Something that you're supposed, supposed to follow. To follow. Mm. A command is different. What's the difference between a command and a suggestion? Command, I believe... you have to do it. And suggestion is you can do it if you want to. It's... Exactly. And so in the Bible, God gave us 10 suggestions. Commandments. Commandments. No, they must be suggestions because no, we don't do them. Come until tomorrow. We, 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 they must be suggestions. Because we like, eh, I don't feel like doing that one. But we are commanded to love. And so in this, in this first and 13, 8, he says, don't owe anyone anything except to love one another agape to love one another to, to love to agape one another not to feel good so now here let, let's go ahead and deal with this so somebody explain this to me when it says don't owe anyone anything is this saying i should never be in debt i should never borrow money no oh okay i gotta know virginia you said what no no okay i say no Okay, I got I got some no's and I got a whole bunch of people going, what is he talking about? All right. And, and so one of the ways actually, oh, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. In the NIV, for those of you who have the NIV, your body it reads, or for those of you who don't, because those who have the NIV, it reads this way. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. And so, see, some of us. I, well, none of you, but some of us, you know, uh, we borrow money from people and then we pretend like we didn't borrow money from people because when we see them, we act like we, 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 we didn't borrow the money and we owe them and we keep that debt outstanding. The mm -hmm. Bible teaches, hey, it's okay if you borrow it, but what do you need to do? Pay it back. Pay it back. <laughs> pay it back. If someone lends you something, you pay it back. All right, that's a whole Bible study all by itself. And so if we pay if we're paying back our financial debts, when can when have you paid enough love? You never yeah. never, never. 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 So when it says, oh no one except love, the continuing debt of love, which is which is what um the NIV says, we have to, how often am I supposed to love you? All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. My love for you is supposed to be all of the time. So I don't get to take Mondays off because I don't feel good. 
I don't get to take time off because you didn't treat me right. And hey, so here, here's, here's another question. Why do I owe you love? Okay, I got it because the Bible tells you to. I kind of like that, but there's another mm -hmm. Anybody else? So God loves us. Oh, say it again, Virginia. Mm -hmm. God loves us. Because God loves us. And the way we pay back God for our love, for his love, is to love others. It's to love others. In John chapter in 1 John 4 19, it says, We love. Why? Mm -hmm. Because God, he first loved us. First loved us. Some of your versions, if you read 1 John 4, 19, it says we love him, but that him is in italics. That means they added that. Some people added that later to help us understand. But if you read it without the italics, it just says we love, period. Because he loved us first. And so when you think about it, you can't really love anyone until you know the love of God. Uh, because God's love for you is it eros? Is it storge? Is it phylos? Is it agape? Agape. agape. It's agape. He has yeah. an agape, unconditional love. Agape. And everybody says, thank God. Yeah. Because of God, God. Us, even when we were at our worst. He loved us. He loved us. He loved us. We sing Jesus loves me. And, and, we, I, and I'm not sure. I think we need to sing that more because I don't believe most of us believe that. Because if I say, you know, God loves you, I got people looking at me going, well, I mean, you know what I did. What's that got to do with anything? Because if his love is unconditional, does it matter what you did? No. no. Does God know what you did? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And did Jesus get on the cross and say, I'm going to die for everyone except um, Rosa because I know what she did? No. Because no. God no. so what? The world? Love no. the world. Love the world. Love the world. He, yeah. he, it was his love. And he loved the world when we were yet sinners. Yes. So then if he loved you while you were a sinner, your sin can't stop his love. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. So if he loves us like that, guess how we should love one all? Oh, shoot. Because <laughs> oh, I, I, I tell you, I love lessons like this because when I talk about loving one another that way, I especially on Zoom, and those people who are brave enough to have their cameras on, I can see faces. And I can see eyes rolling. And because well, you don't know about such and such. And you don't know what she said to me. And you don't know what he did to me. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you the truth. That this is from, from the most caring part of my pastoral heart. I don't care what they did. Me, the pastor. Because there's no caveat in here. Right. Right. And so, you know, and really, you, you can argue with me all day. Well, pastor this and pastor that. Hey, I didn't write it. Can, can we be clear? Yeah, don't 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 write letters to me. Don't send me emails. You told me to love these people, and they treated me bad. No, I just told you what the word says. Yeah, and I gave you permission to log off before I started, and you stayed. Yeah. So you get to hear it. Yes. Okay. So except to love one another. And why does he say love one another in that first verse? Love one another. What does loving one another do in, in verse eight? It makes you know you obeyed your commandments. Fulfilling the law. Fulfilling the law. It, 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 fulfilling the law. Fulfilling the law. And what law is he talking about? The commands that he gave. Which commands? Oh. About, well, all love. of them. But <laughs> I, I love one another. I love you. Okay. All right. And so in verse nine, he starts to list commands. What commands are yeah. listed in verse nine? Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not kill. Do not bear false witness. Do not covet. Okay. So here's a question. 
How does loving someone fulfill these commandments? Because if you love them, you wouldn't do the stuff that he's saying don't do. See, Rosa gonna come teach Bible study. <laughs> because if I love you, I won't sleep with your wife. Mm -hmm. If I love you, I won't take your stuff. Right. If I love you, I won't want your stuff. I want you to have more stuff. Yeah. yeah. If I love you, I wouldn't lie. So, so here's the beautiful thing. Many people talk about Christianity as to being about all the things you don't do. Don't mm -hmm. steal. Don't lie. Don't do this. Christianity is about what you don't do. Christianity is about what you do. It's not about the thou shalt not. It's about the thou shouts. And the major thou shalt is, he says it in the, ver in the verse nine, thou shalt love your neighbor. Your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Your neighbor, how? As, as, yourself. Your neighbor. as yourself. Now, those Bible scholars, we know this as the second greatest commandment. Mm -hmm. What's the first? What is the greatest commandment? I shall love the Lord. I shall love the Lord. Thank you, Sister Payne. That's my mama right there, y'all. Bible yeah. scholar. <laughs> That's the love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt yeah. love your neighbor as yourself. So somebody give me a quick thought. How come he only quoted the second commandment here and not the first one? Wow. Be Go ahead, Reverend Gentry. Um, so uh, as I think about the word love, it's, I won't say the word assume, but we mm -hmm. love God. Mm -hmm. We say that we love God, everything that we do. But you, the first thing that you said at the beginning of the Bible study is love is an action word. How can I love God whom I've never seen? And I'm looking at his people every day mm -hmm. and I cannot love them. So yes. I believe that that is why it was listed uh, as a reminder that we love God, but how can we love God if we're not loving his people? Amen. Go ahead, Renee. I'm going to say that, you know, the Bible tells us God is love. So mm -hmm. in order to love your neighbor, you have to love God first. Amen. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Go ahead, Brother Cooper. Uh, the question was, why did he say uh, the second uh, commandment? The first is a... Uh, well, he mentioned it because he knew that the first law was going to be coming from everybody's mind and heart toward him. <clears throat> the second one is to love thy neighbor as thyself was uh, his way of showing us that in his love, comes unconditional and we should share uh, our, our positive thoughts, positive emotions, and positive feelings for one another instead of hating each other. Okay. All right. All right. Um let's see. I need I need I need a I need a quick I need, I need someone who's quick with uh, getting through their Bible. Because I need, I need someone to read 1 John chapter 4, 19 through 21. 1 John chapter 4, verses 19 through 21. Little Bible aerobics. But we should have told you to stretch first. I got it. Who's got it? I do. All right, Rosa. 1 John. Not John, not, not the gospel of John, but first the letter to John. Make sure. Yes, sir. First John 19 through 20, what? 21. Okay. Go ahead. We love him. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and haven't 
and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not, for he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And mm -hmm. this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. All right. Thank you very much, Russell. That was what Reverend Gentry was talking about when she quoted yeah. that was First John uh, 420, when she said, hey, and we all quoted, hey, how can you love God who you've never seen if you don't love your brother who you see every day? All right. All right. But he goes back to but I wanted to make sure we read verse 21 as well. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God. Ooh, I love God. I love God. Ooh, do you love God? Come on, uh, Sister Smith, sing it with me. You love God? I love God. You don't love mm -hmm. God? What's wrong with you? But if you sing in that song about how you love God, but you don't talk to the person across the street because they're a different color. Okay. Or, or you won't help somebody out because they did something to you last year. This says anyone who loves God must, mm -hmm. must love their brother. That is a command. And so God has linked his word links. His love. You want to know if God, hey, oh, I love God. Well, you know, if you want to tell somebody loves God, look at how they treat people. Mm. Yeah, you don't treat people right, you don't love you God. Now, some of us need to say, Lord, have mercy. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Because I've been talking about loving you for a long time, but I hate sister so and so. Yeah. We go ahead. Let, 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 let's go ahead. Hey, this is still we still in the year of get real. Let's get real. We 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 talk in love of God in one side. But we show up clear, make it clear about all the people we hate. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pour water on her if she was on fire. Mm. Oh, I've never said that, but you thought it. Mm. And so we've got to fix that because our love of God is in question. And be real clear, it's not really in question by me. It's in question by God because he has it in his book. And when we, when we grade our own tests, and again, I've already told you, God's love for you is not in question. God loves you. He, he loved you when you did what you did. He loved you when you said what you said. His love for you is not a question. The issue for every Christian is our love for him. And because love is an action, he should be able to see it. I think there was a song, Miss Washington, you might know. Get, wait, give me something I can feel. Give me a love I can feel. Somebody's like, no. She's like, no, I don't know nothing about that. Man. Don't be looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Our love should be something God can see. And, I, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm not convinced God is looking at our love on Sunday morning at 1145 to make sure we sing it with our eyes closed. Oh, look at the way she's singing. Ooh, the, Michael, she loved me. Look at her, look at her singing like that. I don't think that's where he's looking. He's watching when we go to Walmart. And we cussing that poor little girl out because she didn't get our order right. Because she, she ain't ringing up stuff fast enough. And we think, well, I just sung to God. He knows I love him. But we're not showing love to the people we run into every day. And we have got to get this right because one of the problems I told you, we've shared it from before, it was Gandhi who said, I don't have a problem with Jesus. I like your Jesus. It's the Christians I don't like. That is an indictment that we should all hang our heads about because I have an unfortunate feeling that there are people out there right now going, you know what? I might go to that church, but the way Bob Payne acts, I don't want to be around that. If he's a Christian, why would I want to be there? And we've got to check. I, I, we we got to stop trying to check everybody else. And we need to check ourselves. 
Matter of fact, it says, you know, not only, you know, he says, hey, if you love God, you must love your brother and sister. But the but the, the second greatest command says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So maybe the issue is uh -huh. you don't love yourself. But either we don't love ourselves or maybe we love ourselves too much. I, I don't know which one it is. Because and, and why is that important? Because if I when I, you know what, I don't do anything to intentionally hurt me. You know, I, I I want the best. If I don't want the best for anybody else, I know one person I want the best for. Mm -hmm. Me. Yeah. And and, and that's and, and that's why it says love your neighbors who love yourself. If it's not good enough for you, Jackie, I know I make this joke all the time. You weren't gonna <laughs> get the beats no way, and but you're gonna give the beats to the food drive. <laughs> you don't like beats, why are you giving them away? <laughs> You know, you, you, we, we, we have stuff that we don't want, that we don't like, that we're going to give to other people, or and, and mm -hmm. we're like, but we wouldn't keep it for ourselves. Right. Is that really loving them as we love ourselves? No. I'm going to give myself the best, but I'm going to give you something yeah. just to say I gave you something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and again, I want to challenge our love. I, I, I think I said this a few weeks ago. Hey, everybody. How's your love life? All the brothers like, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I do. Oh, I, do. <laughs> I ain't asking about your sex life. Right. No. I'm asking about your love life. How does your love look? How, let me, actually, let me say it, Christian. How does your agape look? Do you have real agape or do you have something else that you're trying to pass off? You know, we got people, I, I think, hey, Sister Smith, didn't one time um, somebody left us a counterfeit $10 bill in the offering plate? Yes. Yeah. Sir? Yeah, yeah. Brought the money to church. Probably said, Ooh, I gave to the Lord. Gave us a fake $10 bill. Yeah. We took it to the bank. The bank was like, this ain't real. <laughs> this ain't real. This ain't real. Put counterfeit money in the plate. But you know what's worse than counterfeit money in the plate? Counterfeit love in the future. Yeah. Yeah. We, we bring in all this fake love over here. And someone said, I think we read in her verse, uh, chapter 12, love must be without hypocrisy. And it was so important to the spirit of God through Paul. He wrote it in chapter 12, and then he turned right around <coughs> and wrote it in chapter 13. And so I need all of us, your homework, check your love life. And I don't want you to check your love life with the people you're supposed to love. Well, I love my kids. Well, I love my husband. I love my wife. I love my pastor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> that. That's not the love life I need you to check. I don't need you to love those who love you. Right. Right. I need you to love those. So actually, this is chapter 12. He says, love your enemies. Mm -hmm. So again, let's take a moment. I want you all just to think about that person that if you saw them in the middle of the road, you'd have a tough time deciding between the brake and the gas. Because some, really? some of us got one. We might have another. We might have somebody. See, you get holy folks like, oh, pastor, I never. Mm. <laughs> mm. Let's let's get real. There's some people out there that we might we might. I won't run over, but I just want to bump them up a little bit. Ooh. I need to know about your love for them. That's the love we need to check. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to love people who love you. Yeah. But what if Jesus only died for people who loved him? <laughs> Where would we be? Mm -hmm. Because remember, we're not churchians. We're not painians. We're not my mommaians. We are Christians. And so our love should not look like our mama's love. It should not look like the pastor's love. It should not look like our best friend's love. It should look like Christ's love. Mm 
And when we fulfill Christ's love, then all of the other commandments, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about committing adultery because I would never think about that because I love you. And so uh, I think we also read it earlier in Romans. He said, hey, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the deeds of the flesh. Everybody, I keep sinning. I keep sinning. I can't stop. You know how you stop? You stop by doing things of the spirit. And somebody tell me, what's the first fruit of the spirit? Love. 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 And if I walk in the spirit, I won't. Let's try that one. Homework number two. For all of us who got our little pets in that we like to do all the time. And, and you know what? That's just who I am. No, that's who you were. Instead of doing that, let's love somebody. Let's show some agape. Let's walk in the spirit. And why? Because, see, like I said before, we cannot multitask as well as we think we can. We just end up doing two things bad. You can only do one thing at a time. And if you love, if you're, too, if you're so busy loving people, guess what? I can't lie on them. If I'm loving them, I can't be, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking their stuff. All right. And, and, and so that's what this says, because, oh, look, love, verse 10, love does no wrong to a neighbor. Nope. Who's your neighbor? Yourself. I got an everybody. Anybody else? Who's your neighbor? All of us, aren't we? Okay, I got an all of us, and I got a bunch of people who are afraid to talk because the pastor been out here just slack. Hey. What, what, what when when uh, when the when the when the lawyer? Yeah, I got Daphne James. She, she said uh, <laughs> Daphne Moore said everybody. Yeah, remember uh, the the story of the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan. Uh, the lawyer was trying to ask Jesus. He said, "Well, who is my neighbor?" And Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan. And the bottom line, the neighbor was anybody who was in need. And, yeah. and how many people do you know that are, anybody yeah. you know that's in need? Yes. Yeah. 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 Everybody. 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 Anybody, anybody remember Mr. Rogers? Yes. Neighborhood. Mr. Rogers, yeah, yeah. What was his song? Or the question he asked every, every day? It's uh, a beautiful Won't you be my neighbor? neighbor? Won't you be my neighbor? And I have a feeling the world is asking the church the same question. Won't you be my neighbor? It doesn't say, won't you be my judge? Mm -hmm. Won't you be my jury? Won't you be my executioner? Won't you be the reporter of all the things that I've done wrong? The question is, won't you be my neighbor? Because if we are their neighbor, that means we will love them. Love them. I think I told you, uh, I think I said it a, a few weeks ago, um, since y'all won't let me sing on Sunday, mm -hmm. um, and we don't have the building space that I want, and we don't have all the programs that I want. I got two things that I am going to guarantee that anybody who comes to St. Mary is going to get. Anybody remember though what those two things are? Love. Uh, Love. And a family. And the word of God. And the word of God. Thank you, Reverend Gentry. You can come back. Okay. I, I, I got two things for you. I got to love the word of God because I, I, I and, and why is that? Because I believe in the world that I live in right now, the world needs, they don't need better music. They got great music. We can't compete. We can't compete with the music on this. They can pull up any song at any point in any time by whoever they want to hear it sung. And I'm going to compete with this. I can't compete with all the big lights. I can't compete with all that stuff. But the world doesn't need that stuff. The word, the world needs love oh. and the word of God. Because you don't need what you already got. And in the world I live in, I don't see a lot of love. And I don't see a lot of, I don't see the word of God. And Miss Jackie, you know what's, you know what's sad about that fact is? I got a church on every corner. Yes. I can't go five. I can't go. I can't go a mile without hitting about five churches. 
And for me to sit here and say there's no love in the world, that's a problem. Go ahead, Reverend Gentry. Um, Pastor, I was reminded as you were talking um, about there's not enough love. Um, growing up, um, there was, it was, I believe it was the Coke commercial. Um, and uh, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's the only thing that there's not plenty of. Um, and I, I just remember that th those lyrics uh, and even, even in the 70s, it was true. But in 2023, it's still relevant because it's even more prevalent now because we live um, in such a different society. Amen. And actually, I would make the argument and, and, and because I think that's right, but we need to be specific because we've got a lot of Eros love going on. I can't turn on my TV without Eros love going on. Love is love and we love this and I got three wives and I got five husbands and I, I got all kinds of love. We, we don't need any more of that. We need agape. And where should the world be able to find agape? In their Bible. No, I mean, well, that's the problem. It's in the Bible, but I need it somewhere else. In their heart. Reading the Bible. In I, their heart. heart. We're the church. And I need it in my hands. Because what is it? Hey, what good is it for me to say, I love you and send you away hungry? That's not love. What good is it for me to tell you, oh, let me read this about the love of God and not demonstrate it? The world needs love as an action word, not as a banner we put outside. The church of love. Well, good, the building loves, but the people are hateful. And so at Jerry and Virginia Church and at Twilight Church and at Linda Church and at Daphne Church and at Renee Church, and at Beverly Church, is there any love? Can people show up at your church and get love? Or do they just get judgment and hatred? Do they get talked about and put down? And then wonder why they don't want your Jesus? Yeah. Because they are looking at us to try to see Jesus. Yeah. And would any of you want to serve a hateful Jesus? No. Anybody, anybody looking for a hateful Jesus? We want angry Jesus. No. We want side. Anybody want side eye Jesus? No. 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 Then, then why is that the Jesus we show in the world? And so it's sometimes I mean, oh, go ahead, Rosa. Sometimes a lot of us don't know how to show love. So when we walk into churches and we getting ready to, well, first of all, when we walk in, we need to have our own aspect of what God means to us so that if someone do give you a side eye of all of whatever they got going on, you will ignore it because you didn't come there for them. But a, a lot of times it, it takes away from the people walking in because like you say when they walk in they don't feel they don't feel Jesus at all all they feel is eyes looking at them they might be dressed the wrong way and that is not acceptable so a lot of times that's why our churches are not filled like they should be well and and, and I will argue again I, I and I know because we do that we, we talk about this on Sunday morning mm -hmm. because it that's the same love I'm showing on Thursday afternoon. So if that's the same love, because your love should not be a spigot that you turn on. My sprinklers, my sprinklers at my house. I have a timer set, Brother Washington. My, my, my sprinklers come on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 a.m. Because I set the timer. Mm -hmm. So some of us, we set our love for every Sunday at 11.15. Yeah. And it comes yeah. on once a week. 
for 32 minutes. Yeah. And then it goes off. But that 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 that's not this. That's not this. And I am challenging, I'm challenging me to be conscious of how I interact with people because I want to be known as a person that loves people. But how can I be a person who loves me, who is known as someone who loves people who never loves people? And please be clear, this love is not about giving everybody money. This love is not about doing everything that people want. Because I got people all the time. Well, if you was a Christian, you'd give me that $100. Well, I don't, show me in here where it says, thou shalt give everybody who has $100 so you can be a Christian. No, because no, that's not loving you. Because just like I don't give my kids everything they want, I shouldn't give every other human being everything they want and call it love. love. Okay, um, Coop and then Renee. Um, chain up a chair in which they he, he or she may go in this in that they pour on. With that being said, uh, men, women, uh, boys, and girls. Uh, a certain, uh, uh, not being taught uh, where the love come from or who to give it to. You know? True. And uh, if if there's a a woman uh, investing in a man, first he has to have God. He, he has to have love in his heart. And uh, if they they are fruitful and multiply. Then he, he got to teach the children that uh, God come first. And, then, and so on and so forth. Amen. Uh, Renee, go ahead. Because love is an action, like any action, the more you do it, it becomes for you. It, it flows from you easier. It's like riding a bicycle is an action. At first, it was really tough, but after a while, it became like second nature. Absolutely, absolutely. And some of us are still, we still wobbling, but we need to keep riding, okay? And, and, and so the challenge for us as Christians is to, again, every, you know, I see all these words, oh, Jesus is all about love. But please be real clear. Jesus told people when they were wrong too, right? Because they would speak the truth. How? In love. Love doesn't pretend like everything is okay when it's not okay. Love tells the truth and tells it in a, in a way not to hurt you or not to harm you, but to bring you back. And so we need to fix some of us need to fix our love lives. And I know they hurt you. I know, I, I know they did. I, I know they hurt you, what they said, what they did, and they sitting around here looking like it don't even bother them. Well, you know what? They're living their best life and, you fall, and you're, you're, you're burning up from the inside. And so we need to let that stuff go so that we can love them and move on and do what we gotta do. And again, please also know loving them doesn't mean I got to live with them. I don't live with everybody I love. I don't hang out with everybody I love. Remember, Jesus loved everybody, but he only had 12 that he, had, that he worked with. He only had three of those 12 that were really close to him. So we, we've got to make sure when we check our love lives, we check it against the standard of Jesus. And Jesus' as a priority was valuing everybody because he knew the price he was going to pay for everybody. And because he paid that price for everybody, we should value them the same way. That's their value no matter what they've done. And, and, and like Renee said, we, we might it, it might not be easy, but we need to keep doing it. Out of the abundance of the heart, 
speaks. The mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. And somewhere I read that, that we should bless and not curse. And blessing is an action of love. And when we love, I don't have to worry about it. This is where I, when we talk about the fact that in John, 1 John, he says, um, all those who are in God cannot sin, are able to not sin. You know why they're able to not sin? Because they're so focused on loving everybody that they don't have time to do that foolishness. Sure. Sure. So if our lives are overtaken in sin, I think we need to check the temperature of our love, our love for God and our love for people. Because when we get those rights, we will be walking in step with the Almighty God. Okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am, Miss Rosa. Is that is this another way of of God asking us to look at the world through our spiritual eyes instead of our carnal eyes? Yes, because. Again, when we talk about walking in the spirit and the fruit of the spirit, the, the first fruit of the spirit is love, that, that we, we walk by faith and not by sight. Because one of the problems we have, when I see you doing good, Daphne, after what you did to me, I get all mad. You she getting away with it. And now I'm all focused on that. And I'm like, you know what, God? She's yours. As a matter of fact, if I love her, I want her back. I, I want to talk to her. What you did to me was wrong. It was wrong. Jesus told people, hey, what you did? Mm, and that went good. It went good. Why? Because I loved you. And, and, and so finding a way to live a life that says you matter. You're a human being. You are somebody God died for. And I'm going to love and I'm going to express that by wanting good for you. Now, can I do everything for you? Can I do everything you want me to do? No, because that's not love for myself either. Right. Because when I give away all my stuff and I'm living in the street so that you can live in the penthouse, that's not love. That's stupid. And, and we weren't called to be that either. We were called to be wise as serpents, but gentle as doves. Okay, anybody questions, comments on uh, Romans 13, 8 through 10? I was just going to... Love is not easy. Love is absolutely not easy. Agape love is not easy. It's, we're sinful creatures. Uh, the devil doesn't want us to have agape love. Uh, is he, he wants to accept eros love and love. The other love is easy. Uh, the devil wants to substitute that, the feeling for it. True. True. Go ahead. No, she did. He was just. She was just saying it's true. Uh, the love hurts. It uh, love is a selfish desire. Love is need. Uh, but need is not a copy. Need is if I get mine, uh, I'll you know you'll get yours. Uh, That's where uh, grace comes in, and the and God enabling us to love in an agape fashion. He can give us a supernatural uh, ability that we can have. It's a miracle. Uh, a baby doesn't love when it's born. It, it wants its bottle. It, it'll fight for its bottle with its sibling. Uh, it's, it's not a agape is not a natural action so that we have to pray for and God has to give us the grace to do it and and and, and thank thank you thank you uh, Reverend Halstead um because here's the thing everybody's gonna tell me it's hard it's hard and, and, and I, I want to thank Brother Halstead for bringing it up because everything I've asked you to use, somebody is thinking, Pastor, you just don't know how hard that is. But guess what God did for you in this case? He gave you his spirit. 
And somewhere I read, all things are possible. Through Christ. All things are possible to those who believe. I can do all things through, through Christ who strengthens me. So yes, this is impossible to do in your own flesh. You do not have the willpower to do it. I got willpower here because I got wills on both sides of me, but you don't have the willpower to do what you need to do, but you don't need willpower. You've got Holy Spirit power. And so when it comes to loving that person or those persons, it's not about, oh, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. It's spirit, help me. Help me to love them. Mom, were you going to say something? You unmuted yourself. No. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. Okay. So yeah, it's not easy. But then again, if any of this was easy, we wouldn't need God. <laughs> And that's why, and I love the way uh, Brother Holstead put it, this is not natural. We were not called to be natural. We were called to be super natural. And if you ask me why I like comic books, because comic books are about people who are not natural. Mm -hmm. They are super. They've got powers. They got bit by a spider. They came from another planet. They got all kinds of, they got all kinds of other stuff that makes them powerful. But guess what? You've got some other stuff that makes you powerful too. And the question then becomes, will you use the power that you already have? Because usually we talk about it with patience, right? Oh, I don't have no patience. But if you have the spirit. You got patience. You got patience. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know. I can't be kind to them. Oh, wait, if you got the spirit, you got kindness. You can be kind. I, I don't have no joy. Ain't nothing to be joyful about. Mm -hmm. If you have the spirit, <laughs> you got joy. You got joy. And I can't love them, Pastor. I just can't do it. Well, if you got the spirit, You got love within. Thank you, Ma. Everybody else was afraid to say it. And so the only question, the question is again, the question is, it can we? The question is, will we? Yeah. Will we make the choice to love? Again, every mother has no problem doing that with their children. Get up, brother, brother Hall said, you get up at two o'clock in the morning, you're gonna run, you're gonna do whatever you gotta do. He gonna bring, she's gonna bring home that note for the, the, the bake sale that's happening tomorrow morning. You're gonna stay up all night baking <laughs> cookies because you love them. You made a choice because the father loves them too. But what did we do all day? What did we do? We went to bed. <laughs> I still love you, but I ain't doing all that. But now you, because you, you made a choice. But if I can make that choice, and how many, how many parents of all of us parents, how many of us, all the sacrifices we made for our children, how many of our children said thank you? <laughs> exactly. So if we don't, we don't expect thank you from them. Why do we expect thank you from them? You ain't got to thank you in 27 years from that child. But if they called you right now, you get off Bible study, you would sell something so you could take care of them. That's love. And the same love that goes for them should go for everybody else. That's, that's not easy. That's why you call on the spirit of God. Yeah. Okay. And in those moments, because again, I, I, I love a lesson like this. And actually, uh, for those of you, uh, tomorrow's Bible study, because I'm going to teach on what uh, Reverend Gentry taught on and, and her, her title last, this past Sunday was, you don't love me no more. Mm -hmm. and, and again, Renee, I didn't plan this Bible study to be right after what Reverend Gentry preached. 
But obviously, as Brother Wade would tell us if he was here, God's trying to tell you something. God's trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. I, I'm going to get a song in every Wednesday, too. I'm trying that, too. You won't let me sing on Sunday. I'm going to sing on Wednesday night. Um, Back to the relationship you were going to say. No, no, no. I'm going, I'm going with Color Purple. <laughs> we're, going, we're going to teach a Bible study on Color Purple. Oh. <laughs> but the bottom line is, if this stuff keeps coming up, it's not an accident, y'all. God wants his people. He, I mean, they will know you are my disciples because you go to church every Sunday. Oh, no, no. They, they'll know you are my disciples because you sing hymns. No. No. They, they will know you are my disciples. Say it again, Renee. By your love. By your love. And actually, not just by your love. By the love that you feel. The love that you show. The love that you, that you show. God is looking for disciples that can be seen. Not because they can quote some scripture, but because they love people. And so your church, your, your, your church, not St. Not, not Mary, St. Twyla, St. Dion, St. Will, St. Daphne, that church. Does Jesus, does everybody know that you're his disciples? Well, yes, Pastor, I'm in Bible study. That's not the answer. The answer is because I show love. And if I show it, that means they can see it. Feel it. Go, go ahead, oh, go ahead, Reverend Gentry. I said, feel it. Yeah, they should be able to feel it too. Because that love makes a difference. Our love should make a difference. Okay? And so I, I, I thought, you know what? It's so funny. When we came in tonight, I said, oh, we, we might finish chapter 13. <laughs> oh, sometimes I, I crack myself up. <laughs> so, how's your love life? And as you answer that question, some of us need to pray, God, help me with my agape life. Some of us, we've been praying for our Eros life. We trying to get us a boo. We trying to get us a boo thing. And, and, and we trying to approve things with our boo thing. No, 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 no. Let's get our agape right. Because agape says that we belong to him. And so I want to challenge you. I dare you. I dare you to love. I dare you, despite what they said about you, I dare you to love them. I dare you to love them because God is seen in our love. And I want to show God off. Do you? So let's go love somebody. Not because they love you, but because you love God. Anybody else? Questions, comments? Yes, Brother Cooper. Yeah, oh, don't serve the peace. You're either going to love God or you're going to love the devil. It's your choice. They got rehearsed or not. Amen. Amen. All right, anybody else? Questions, comments? All right, let's pray. Father God, forgive us. Forgive us for not loving like you love us. Forgive us for loving in word, but not in deed. Forgive us for loving with a feeling, but not loving with our hands and our feet. Lord God, forgive us for choosing those who we will love because they love us and ignoring others. Forgive us for confessing love for you while we hate our brothers and sisters. God, forgive us. Tonight, we want to be better. Tonight, we want to be more like you. But we can't do it without your help. We need you to empower us. We need you to encourage us. 
We need you to give us what, oh, you already did, God. You gave us your spirit. God, quicken that spirit within our spirit that we might walk in love as you walked in love for us. God, help us to love one another and love our neighbors because you first loved us. God, we don't want to worry about the sin that we might commit. We want to focus on the love that we need to share. So make us people of love right now, not in word, not in thought, but in deed and action. God, use us to represent you well so the world might know that we are your disciples and that we are indeed your church. Lord, thank you for giving us another chance to love you by loving others. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Thank Amen. you very much, everybody, for Amen. your time and attention. Thank you, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hey, hey Mother Pain. Hey. Bless. Hello, Mother Pain. Hey, Pat. Hey. Hey, Mother Pain. Hey.